Hi, my name is Jeff Rhodes, and this is another video of, about uh, Office 365 and SharePoint Power Apps and so forth uh, based on my book. You can see it here. Hopefully you picked up a copy already. You can get it on Amazon or other uh, ones, so you can see it here. Let's see what it's doing today. So number 10 on SharePoint Guides right now, so not too bad. You can pick it up on Kindle and so forth. Uh, remember, if you're doing it and you want to really drink dig down into the figures, you can go to the source code and download all the figures in addition to all the source code, including the source code we're going to talk about today. So this is an example from the book. And basically what happened with it is uh, we go into this page. So years ago, uh, we had our Mitchell Hall, which is our menu, our, you know, our dining hall at the Air Force Academy. And we wanted a solution where they were going to link up the uh, the the menu so they were having somebody send the email out the menu for the day and wanted to help them build a SharePoint site that you could put all the menus for the month and then it would automatically figure out what day it is and then set the right one and in my example it's all says December but if you look at your watch today the day I'm recording this it's actually on the 9th of the month but it's February 9th but uh, the idea would be each month you would just throw in the new spreadsheet for that month or maybe rename, you know, the, the whatever the, the, the February menu to be, you know, current menu dot uh, XLS X or whatever. And it would then programmatically show the right menu for each page rather than kind of updating it every day. You just update it every month. And really, you could do a whole year's worth of menus if you wanted to. And. And literally, just in this example, just rename it the you know end of every month so that the next month you know had the the same name that the page is used to. So I'm going to show you how to build that, and it's kind of interesting, and uh, go from there. So first thing, let's look at the spreadsheet. So you'll see I I've got it here. We've loaded it up in there. You can see you've got December first and second and so forth. And what I did there is just name each area. Uh, correctly so let's go in we can do it in the formulas go to name manager and you can see we've got these are alphabetical we got day one through day 31 so each one of those so for example you see I've got highlighted this is day two and if I go to the next one you can see it over here that's day three and so forth so as long as you set up an Excel file with those named areas in there whatever is displayed will uh, show there programmatically. The next thing that we do is insert the page. So you'll see if I edit here, you know, you uh, I've got some JavaScript we'll cover about in a minute, and then I've got an Excel uh, thing, uh, you know, Excel viewer. So let's do that first just to see how to do it. Now to get this, you can do an Excel, you know, in a modern page. But it's kind of nice to do a classic one here because I want the content editor to get my JavaScript. And I've got a separate video on how to, in SharePoint Online, Office 365, to get content editors enabled. So I really would recommend that because you'll see a lot of these videos we do some pretty cool stuff by embedding JavaScript in jQuery. We're not using jQuery this time, but the JavaScript side and work with the object directly. So what you would do is insert web part and then go to uh, business data and then click this Excel web access. So I'll just go ahead and do it and then we'll, we'll delete it from there. And then what you want to do is go edit web part and then you got to put the, the workbook. So we'll see if we can get it to, to navigate to it. And you got to know where it is so let's find and I'm in the samples directory. So I got to go to documents is where I put it. And I pick my the uh, XLSX file. And then this one, unfortunately, it does a, a, a search, but it doesn't really give you any of the choices there. So you got to know that. So let's just say day one. So this is where you have to open up your Excel file and you got to know the, that name, the name to put it in the name manager. 
and then we can do I'll typically put like no toolbar and I won't allow any of this stuff I won't put I don't want this name drop down list that can kind of be interesting sometimes if you want the user be able to select like let's say you want to be able to change it to other days menus you could do that but I'm not going to do it here and uh, so forth so there's some other stuff you could do but that's the gist of it and then you'll see it put that first one on there and that's what we have on this other one as well and then the gist of it is is that you then use JavaScript to change it programmatically rather than having to go in every you can imagine every day going in here and remembering to set that and even on the weekends and stuff to set that manually to the right day that'd be kind of a big hassle all right so let's go ahead and just delete that but you see that's how you set up the first part okay we'll stop editing and then we'll just discard the changes because we don't care about that it's doing its thing there you go we don't necessarily even care about that too much so I'll come back to that in a minute so what the next thing that we'll do is look at our code library so we have this adjust name part to the day text file okay and I can click on that to see what it does and there's all the code as I've talked about in other videos I like to copy this code and look at it in Visual Studio instead but before I did that I wanted to show you where do we get this code from so it's nice this is where we work with the SharePoint object model so uh, the EWA is for Excel Web Access, I believe that means. And then if we search the documentation, we've got, you know, some objects, some, some uh, methods and so forth that we can deal with. And so in particular, we're going to do this add application ready. So it's basically saying, what are we going to do when that thing's fully loaded? And it gives us some example code where you'll see in a minute, basically I copied all that code and then I started working on it here and there's some other methods you're going to see we're going to use the get active workbook and so forth to come through and figure out which one's active and then we're going to set the name part and so forth so let's go over to visual studio to look at it so i just literally copied that in here so we've got a a variable and we've got like a counter and then the window object, we're talking the browser. So we're saying when it's on load, then we're going to call this function EWA on page load. Notice if we were using jQuery, which is in some of our other examples, it has a document.ready event, which is very similar here. And so then we're going to add an event listener as well. And some of the, I have to look at the details, but sometimes we do some of these for, uh, Internet Explorer and for other browsers so that's kind of what's going on there I forget which which is which but one of these will be the attach event and the other ones will do add event listener but neither way we are going to call our function and then notice that's the one we just looked at add application ready and then we're going to call a function here so the bottom line of all that is that when the page is fully loaded but before it's displayed we're going to call this function okay so we're going to declare our object and we're going to find all the controls on that page because there could be more than one remember we just added a different one so that we what we could presumably set one to one thing you could say here's today's menu and here's tomorrow's menu and as long as we do get item zero will be the first one get item one will be the second one we could actually set them both at once and then what we're going to do here is get the active workbook so we're gonna say okay what what Excel file is linked up to our Excel web access control and then we're gonna say okay you can see our comment there only run if it's if in named item view so that's a method is it in named item view and then we get all the named items in the workbook okay so that's just a collection of items and then here's a kind of our nice JavaScript thing. So we get today, we'll name it as a new date, and we'll run this in the debugger in a minute so you can see it. And then we get the day of the month. So 
So that'll be one, two, three, four, whatever the day is. And then I'm going to build a variable based on how I know I named it with that underscore day and then the number. Okay. And then what I'm doing is I get the current, uh, get the next named item. So I'm going to get that, I'm going to build a variable that is that named item. And then I'm going to pass it back and say, okay, update yourself with that named item. And then the rest of this is just some, some alerts to when we're debugging it. Because it's hard to debug this stuff if it's not working. So you could, if I, at one time I had that uncommented and then we've got this callback so we could see and it would say, just let us know that it's working. So that's the gist of it. So let's see if we, the way I typically will try to uh, debug something after it gets injected into, into the SharePoint page is I'll copy something that's unique and then try to find it in the debugger. So let's give that a shot, see if we can get that to work. So we'll come back over here. Let's find our page again. Let's uh, try to run it again, make sure it's still working. Uh, hope I didn't mess it up somehow on my... Alright, still loading. Huh. Doesn't seem to be loading correctly. Well, let's go. Let's do this. We might as well just create a new one and let's see if we can build it rather than debug the, the one that's not working. So that's no problem. Let's try that. So we'll come up here and we'll say add a page. Oh, and that's right, I don't want to do add a page that way because that will automatically do a, um, a, a modern page, which we need just the, the classic page here. So let me go to pages. So we'll leave that. And let's see, we got to go to site contents. Oh, site pages. And then we do new, and we'll call it a wiki page, which will be like a classic page here. So we'll just call it a menu like that. There we go. So let's try it again. Might as well do that part. So let's go to business data, sell web access. We'll select our book. In the documents directory, like that. We'll call this day one just so we can see something come on here. We'll put no toolbar. We won't auto generate these. Get rid of that name part list. That should be enough for now. So far, so good. Now let's insert a content editor, the media and content. It's kind of lost. I wonder if I needed to save. Sometimes you have to save that in advance. It looks like it's kind of lost our link there. Let's go ahead and edit that one more time. Make sure we didn't lose. Yeah, that's okay. Let me put the title in here. That's probably why it says untitled there. It was a little odd. So we'll just call Mitchell Paul Menu. There we go. Let's say OK. I think that will come back. We'll see. So let's edit our web part. And what we need to do there, let's go find that code. So we basically need to give it a URL, but it's kind of off there a little bit so we'll put the URL in that way find where we are where did it come from there it was and let me go back one though it's that text is basically what I want to get I can't really copy it very well adjust name part today 
dot text. Let's see if I can just type it in right. And then what I like to do here is say JavaScript code do not delete. Then I set this to Chrome type of none, which means that it'll only show up when we're in editing the page. And then we'll save. There we go. And see how it was the uh, first, but now it's the ninth to match my day of the page. So let's go look in the debugger here. So I can hit F12. And I go to sources. And then on the page itself. And then we'll search. Let's see if my thing's still. Oh, that's got the wrong thing I didn't want anymore. Let's copy that. Let's see if we can find the code that we're looking for. All right, so there's our code. And let's just put a breakpoint here. And we'll reload the page. Yeah, and then we can look at our, make this bigger. So we look at our call stack and stuff. So there's a whole bunch of things getting set up here. Let's do F, let's uh, run it this way. See if I can find my uh, EWA. There's a whole lot of variables that it's making there. There we go. That's what I want. So I have all my variables here. And EWA is right there. So we'll, so you can see I can roll over it too. So it's got all that stuff in it. So I'm just going to keep going. And I'll scroll down. So there's our workbooks. You notice it has a value now. And I do it again. Let me collapse this. So items. And if I look in, I can see some difference. You don't need to worry about all this stuff. If it has a value, it's doing OK. And then today, you can see how it has a, a, a script. So you can see it's Sunday, February 9, 2020 at a particular time. And then I do it again, and now it can give me the ninth. So that's that today.get name. Do it again. So the one I want is underscore day nine. I run the item. It's again as a named item, and that's pretty much it. And we go forward, and it's all there. So a little bit of work. So it's kind of nice how you can you know, control the web part from your own JavaScript code. So there's a lot that you can do with that uh, just by changing out the named item. So hopefully that was useful. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I hope to do things even outside the book, some more uh, on programming in Office uh, 365 applications, Power Apps, Power Automate, and so forth. So we'll uh, see you down the road. Thank you so much.